Hey guys, what is up? Welcome to my channel. For today's video, I am doing my monthly palette rankings. These are all of the eyeshadow palettes that I tried in the month from February. From worst to best, I tried a total of 10 eyeshadow palettes. I know it's like pretty late to be posting this video, but you guys know the situation. I'm... I'm off schedule, but <laughs> let's get to number 10, the worst eyeshadow palette that I tried this month. And honestly, I didn't try a terrible eyeshadow palette this month. I, for lack of a better term, I, I can say I like all of these eyeshadow palettes. But let's start off with the worst, my least favorite, and that is with the surprisingly Natasha Denona number 10 palette. This they no longer sell. I got it on a heavy discount a few months ago, and I thought the color story was interesting. I used to think this color story was kind of ugly, but as I've gotten more into cool tones, I became increasingly more interested, so I did eventually obviously end up picking it up. It took me a while to try it, and it's not Natasha Denona's best quality in my opinion. I think it has to do with the tones of the colors. I find the shadows to be a bit more powdery, a little bit more difficult to blend. When I created a look with this palette, it took me a long time to pull the look together, which is just very uncharacteristic for Natasha Denona. So yeah, that's why this is the worst eyeshadow palette I tried this month. Is it terrible? No. Is it the worst eyeshadow palette I've ever tried? Absolutely not. It's just not up to par with the normal Natasha quality that I expect, so I wouldn't necessarily recommend it to you. Number nine is the Urban Decay Wild Greens palette. I like this one too. I did a review on this and I said that I like this one and this is the palette that I'm wearing today. I wanted to do a simple kind of wash of green kind of look simple springy and yeah I mean this palette is a solid solid okay I just feel like there's a lot missing from this palette there's a lot of depth that would be very helpful in this palette to make it more complete some of the shades are a little bit more crumbly and messy I wouldn't go as far as to say this is a bad palette but I tried so many good palettes this month that this is where it landed and I don't necessarily recommend this I think there's a lot better green eyeshadow palettes out there on the market. I don't think this was a flop from Urban Decay, but I do think it was a missed opportunity. I feel like they could have done something really, really cool with this, but you know, if you like the color story, I don't think you'll dislike this, but just know there's not much depth. It's a pretty simplistic palette, and I've liked the looks that I've created, but it's not necessarily a palette that I've been super duper excited to use. Number eight is from Tom Ford. This is the Eye Color Quad Cream in Rose Topaz. I tried to resist in trying these cream palettes, but ultimately, you know, curiosity got the best in me. So I picked up the shade Rose Topaz, and I loved the look that I got with this, but there was something that was just a little bland about this for me. So it's really pretty, and I absolutely love the consistency and the way that the formula feels. So I do recommend this formula. You get no fallout. It's really easy easy to throw on for my everyday work girls that are looking for very simple makeup. I think you will love this formulation. But again, it's just $89 and I have a hard time wrapping my brain around this color story for $89. While it's beautiful and I like it, I couldn't bring myself to tell you you need to buy it. Which brings me to number seven. This is the <laughs> second cream quad that I ended up picking up because I thought for sure like maybe it was the color story. I had to know. I also saw this being swatched and I thought it was really pretty. This is Tiger Eye and the swatches online make this look a lot more boring than it actually is. But yes, I mean, this is a boring palette, but I've enjoyed this because I'm a boring girl. And for everyday simple looks for these past few weeks, I've been loving this. I've been in transition into a new home and I really didn't care about what makeup I was wearing. I was just trying to throw something on and this was very, very useful. I, I wouldn't say, do I like this color story more than Rose? topaz I'm not sure this is a little bit more everyday friendly a little bit more simple rose topaz is a little bit more cool and smoky so they're two very different color stories but I definitely reached for this one a lot more number six oh this is where competition gets tough but I'm gonna give sixth place to the rock candy palette from ColourPop 
I really, really love this palette. And oh my gosh, I totally recommend it if you're into these types of colors. It was not a color story that I needed to add to my collection by any means whatsoever. I actually did a get ready with me. I was like chit chatting about makeup news and some products I've been loving and I used this. Love the quality of this. I think this is a really good one from ColourPop. It allows you to have a wide array of colors within this color family. Just wasn't a palette that I needed. And you know, with ColourPop quality, it is a little bit powdery, a little bit messy, so that's why it fell in six. But I definitely recommend this if you're into the color story. I've gotten some very nice cooler toned looks with this, so I've had a lot of fun playing around with this. Number five, if you missed it this month, Kaleidos launched a smoky nostalgia collection. Literally, I was in love with every single thing that launched in the collection, okay? Loved everything. There is not a name on this quad, so I will have it written down in the description box, but it is the cooler toned quad that I am talking about next. Knocked it out of the park with the formulation. Now, this is not my favorite of the two because it's not a color story that I am consistently reaching for. It's very, very cool. This is more of like an evening kind of look when I would grab this, but just know the quality is really great. The shade right here, incredible, super multi-dimensional. I don't know how Kaleidos does it. If you like this color story, I highly recommend it. Kaleidos killed it with this. Number four, another green palette. I definitely recommend this one over the Urban Decay palette. But Odin's Eye came out with a collaboration with Angelica Nikis, and it's the Hella palette. This is so, so beautiful. I've loved the looks that I've created thus far with this. Super green palette. You have to be into greens and be a little bit more experimental for you to like this color story. But as always, Odin's Eye did a great job with the quality. Angelica is just a genius when it comes to colors. I know Angelica was a little bit worried because she did watch my review and she was like, are you sure you like it? And I was like, I do, I do. You guys know how picky I get. But yes, I love this palette. I think it's really great. Is this a palette I'm going to reach for every day? No, I'm a little too basic for this palette. But if you're interested in the color story, I definitely recommend it. The knack Odin's Eye has to creating textures so good. Such a fun brand to get into if you haven't tried them yet. Number three is from M Cosmetics. They launched their Masterpiece Collection this month, and this is the Da Vinci Eyeshadow Palette. So it's a little bit deeper here, but how pretty is this? Oh my goodness. The basic B in me, you will see with these top three. They're all very, very basic palettes. I did not know how good M Cosmetics Eyeshadow Palette formula was, but um, yeah, I'm loving this. This has a very interesting mustard tone here and just really great for an everyday, deeper, kind of neutral smoky eye. I don't know, I don't have anything bad to say about this. M Cosmetics killed it, which is why number two is the Rodin palette, which is the other palette that came out with this collection. I was for sure I was gonna like the deeper one, Da Vinci better, but I actually ended up being more inclined to reach for Rodin over here. It's a little bit brighter and normally I like a lot of depth in my neutral looks, but there was something refreshing about this. I liked the tones a little bit better with my complexion. So both are great, but I think I also like the shimmers in here better. So I've been reaching for this one more, I feel like I get a little bit more of a complete look with this. But either way, I feel like you cannot go wrong with either. These are amazing. I am looking forward to trying more eyeshadows from M Cosmetics because, oh, I love these color stories. It's been cloudy and disgusting all day and the sun is coming up, thank goodness, but it's messing up my lighting. <laughs> all right, guys, this video ended up being quick. I think this is the fastest I've ever talked before. But number one, my most favorite eyeshadow palette that I tried this month was the other quad from Kaleidos. I'm actually pretty surprised that this ended up being my number one, but it's just so simple, basic, and glam to reach for. This for me is an ideal everyday palette. So like the other one, the mattes are super easy to blend, super pigmented. Kaleidos just did a phenomenal job with the formulation. Great beginner friendly, but you also get a lot of pigment. But I think the catch is this super glam, shimmery, reflective eyeshadow on the lid. I love neutral basic colors, but I want something extra glam and glittery on my eyelid, and this just fulfills that. So I've reached for this a ton this month 
just for every day. I mean, when I say a ton, obviously it's only a handful of times because I have to test palettes and dig in and all of that. But compared to the rest, I reached for this palette one of the most times out of all and have loved my makeup every single time. This is just a thoughtless, everyday, neutral palette for me. So I highly recommend it if you are basic. But I told you, those top three choices were super, super neutral and boring. But that's what I'm into lately as I am wearing this on my eyelid. But anyways, there we have it, you guys. Those were all of the eyeshadow palettes that I tried in the month of February from worst to best. I'm very interested to see if I'll even have a March video up because I've only tried one palette new in March and my uh, Natasha Denona is actually <laughs> coming today so that will make two so I don't even know if I'll have enough to do a video but uh, sorry I just got a notification I was seeing if it was my Natasha Denona palettes but that's all I have for today's video I hope you guys enjoyed it if you aren't subscribed to my channel already I would absolutely love it if you would consider taking the time to do so and I will see you guys in the next one bye guys have a good one